So we're going to start off with some pipe cleaners, some burlap. We're also going to need deco mesh that is not seen here. You're going to need a variety of ribbons, at least three different kinds. Preferably wired, but if not, I'm going to show you how to fix that. And I'm going to use some jute. This is an 18 inch Dollar Tree wreath. I got mine at the thrift store. We're going to start off by putting down our Chanel stems. So, I am going to, I started off without uh, turning on the camera, so I took them off and I'm going to show you again. We're going to go around the middle bar and the center ring. This way it doesn't slide around. You can see what I'm doing here under, kind of making an X over it. I'm going to twist it just a few times and you're going to go all the way around your wreath doing this to every one of those little crossbars. Very easy. This is what we're going to use to attach our ribbons and our deco mesh down to this wreath. It's kind of a combo wreath. I wanted to do something a little bit different and I love the way it turned out. So I hope you'll keep watching. Okay, now we're going to loop over the inner ring and the outside ring and put a little twist in there to hold it still. Now it can still move between, it can kind of slide up and down there, but that's not going to be a problem once you get your poofs on and you'll see what I mean shortly. If it bothers you that they're moving around, you can use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. No problem at all. Continue around like this until you get every little section with a stem, a Chanel stem, a pipe cleaner on the outside. So you are going to end up, when you are finished, with 16 of these little ties all the way around. All right, so I've got some scraps of deco mesh and wonderful miracles happen every day. Proof will be shown to you in a moment. So this is 20 inches. I thought I would have enough to go around this entire wreath. However, I do not. And I find that out once I get toward the end of the roll and not the end of the wreath. So, not a problem though, not a problem. I'm going to place down a section of that after I've gathered it up. I'm going to press it firmly into the center of one of those middle wires, just like that, and then just push it through to the back. Now I'm going to use my ruler to show you. Uh, most of the time when I'm doing this off camera, I just kind of guess. I don't really measure it every single time, but it's completely up to you for demonstration purposes and to show you I'm going to be measuring it just so you know what we're doing. So I think I took a 10 inch poof there. I'm going to show you the measurements here. Yep, 10 inches. And I'm just going to make a poof in the inside, then I'm going to go to the outside. Then we'll go back to the inside. And then after that one's done, we'll go to the outside. We're just going to follow it all the way around. It's sort of a little back and forth motion. 10 inches. I'm measuring it. And I'm just going to twist it around. And those little extras, you can just cut those off. They're not going to be... Sometimes with deco mesh, they'll come... Like they'll pull loose. And I noticed that with Dollar Tree mesh. That happens a lot. This mesh that I'm working with today actually came from the thrift store. And the burlap ribbon that I use came originally from Walmart. I got it on clearance at Walmart years ago and I've just held on to it as craft, you know, crafters often do. We hang on to things. So I thought, oh, you know what? I've got some blue over there. So let's, let's just add some blue and we'll make this kind of, you know, kind of like you would have an American flag. Most of it is red and white and then you have a section of it that's blue. So I thought we'll give it a try. So this was sort of an, an experiment. I'm going to untwist my little tie here, holding everything together, place that blue in, put the little frayed tail from the edge up underneath there with the other one, and then tightly twist it down. You can see my freckles, and I have a little bit of a sunburn. I was at a family reunion this weekend, had a blast. I know I have some family members who watch my videos, and I had so much fun. I just had so much fun. So if you're watching today, I miss y'all. I love y'all. We have to do it again soon. Okay, so this deco mesh is smaller than the other one. I think the other one's 20 inches. This is like a 10 inch deco mesh. 
so it's thinner. I'm going to use the same size poofs, but I'm going to go over it twice to give it more bulk. So you'll see what I mean. Same process. We're going to go to the inner ring, then the outside, then the inner, then the outside, until we get all the way back to where we, um, to where the red and white stop over there. So you'll see here. I just wanted to leave all this in because some people really need to see it all. So I'm leaving it in for you. And I'm going to get back to the end and I'm going to twist it. Now rather than cutting it off, we're going to double it back over on itself. And we're going to do 10 inches again and that's going to give us about 20 inches like the other one and we should have approximately the same coverage. So I'm just going back over. So you made another little poof. And I'm just going to go back over right where we came from in the same pattern and place that back down. And you can see the difference in the poof on the left and the poofs on the right. You get a lot more coverage there and I really like the look of this. So that might be something for you to think about. If you get your deco mesh uh, at Dollar Tree, you know, maybe double it up. If you get it at the thrift store but you know it's a remnant and you don't know if you'll have enough, you know, go ahead and patch things together. This is one of those little happy accidents that, you know, the great Mr. Bob told us about a long time ago. Happy little accidents, like the little happy trees. And this worked out perfectly. All right, at this point, you're probably gonna look at your wreath and go, what in the heck? This looks terrible, it looks sad. Don't be discouraged, do not worry. Believe that this is going to get better, because it does. It's just kind of thin right now, kind of thin, kind of sparse, a little sad, but it's going to look better. So start fluffing out your poofs a little bit, and you can see you got more coverage, right? It looks a little bit better as you go along, fluffing everything out. And then we're going to be adding layers onto it. We're going to put burlap on it. We're going to put little ribbon stacks in there. We're going to add a bow to it. It's, she's going to look fabulous shortly. Give her some, give her some time. She's going to look fabulous. So you see I've got my blue. I want to keep that sort of on the top and on the left. And then the rest of that red and white is going to be on the right. So now we're going to start with this burlap. I'm going to take a section of it. That's about, I don't know, an inch or two. Bundle it up in my hands and then loop it over. Same thing, 10 inch little poofs here. Gather it in your fingers, poof it up. Now for me, at some point here while I'm filming, I stop measuring because a little thing you could know, once you get to this point and you've got your base down with your deco mesh, that burlap that goes on top, you're just going to be laying it right down on top of that other poof. So you, the measurements are exactly like, like what's underneath it, essentially. You know, make sure that that little covering just lightly sits on top of the, the base that is under there, the deco mesh. If you do that and you can stop using the ruler, this process will go on a lot quicker. Although I have to say, this is not really the most lengthy part. It's usually the cutting all of the little strips of ribbon to make your little um, ribbon stacks that take the most time, for me anyway, and all that dovetailing, you know, all those little special details that make it look so great in the end. That's the part that takes me the most time. And I don't show you back to the beginning where we put that first little section of burlap down, you're just going to cut off enough that you can tuck it under and right through the frame. Now you can start to pull your burlap and your deco mesh poofs apart. So they're back and forth, kind of crisscrossed over each other. So you want to pull the burlap to one side and the deco mesh to the other side, back and forth. So deco mesh, burlap, burlap, deco mesh, back and forth, back and forth. You see that? It almost looks like the burlap is kind of threaded through the deco mesh. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? And just by pulling those apart, look how much fuller the wreath is already. Look how much better that looks already. Yep. Okay, so now start on the little stacks of ribbons here. This is thrifted ribbon. Surely you can get something like this at Michael's, but you know, Dollar Tree, I'm going to tell you, I was in there recently. They have some beautiful 4th of July and patriotic ribbons that are burlap with stars. And I think there was one with trucks and fireworks. 
Um, I don't have those yet. I'm just using up what I've got, but I will be getting some more goodies because I love decorating for the patriotic holidays. So we're cutting them in 10 inches and we're going to dovetail the ends and I'm gonna do the same thing with the red and white and this beautiful fabric trim that I found. I found it at Goodwill. We're gonna make it stiffer or we're gonna make it wired, I guess we could say, by just doubling it over on top of some of this Dollar Tree burlap. This is such a simple process. I'm just, and this is just cotton that's on top, but isn't this a beautiful ribbon? All right, so I'm gonna start off by just cleaning off the end of my glue gun here. And then I'm gonna do zigzags and lines right in the center. Because it's the thickest part, it's not gonna to stick to the table. It's not gonna make a mess and burn me. So I'm just gonna focus mainly in the middle of that ribbon where the lace is sewn on the other side. You can certainly do this with the lace side up. I just didn't do it that way, but you can if you want to. And then pat it down, rub it, and then you can start cutting off your sections. This one we're going to cut it nine inches. We're going to cut this one a little bit shorter. And then it's going to get dovetailed as well. So you're going to have 16 of each ribbon that you choose to use. 16. You see now we have like a wired ribbon. Perfect. Perfect. I love doing this. Continue along just like this until you get the right amount of each of your ribbons. And then... Here are my three patterns. I'll show you how we're gonna stack them. We're gonna make an X with the two 10 inch ribbons in the back and the nine inch ribbon's gonna go right in the middle. Just like that. You can use all 10 inches if you want to, but because this was a fabric bow that's a little floppier, even with the, you know, the other ribbon underneath it, I just thought that I would use it this way and it helps me save that ribbon so I have enough for a bow in the end. Pinch it together, you can use clips and do them all at once, or you can do it one at a time. And just open up where you have your little twist ties. Be sure, I mean, not the twist ties, the pipe cleaners. Be sure you use full length pipe cleaners too. Don't cut these in half, you will not have enough because these are very bulky. This wreath is bulky, and we're gonna be adding a lot of things to it, so leave those whole. Then you're just gonna place it down Twist it tightly so that it holds in the center of the little poofs between the poofs and then spread those ribbons apart. Here's another one. We're gonna layer them across like this. Walk your fingers toward each other, kind of an accordion pleat in the middle. Hold on to it. Open up the little Chanel stem or your pipe cleaner, whatever you wanna call it, and twist it. You could certainly use floral wire, you know, if you had to. If that was your only option, you could use that. You just have to be careful because you will poke your fingers with that stuff. And it's easier to find these Chanel stems down in the fabric and the burlap and the, you know, whatever you're using as your base than to use those skinny, thin little wires. And besides, these are cheap and you can get them at Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. You can get a big package. So you can see how I fan those out. Make sure that you have your ribbons flipped over in the right direction once you get them down and you begin to fluff. At this point, it's not necessary for you to fluff if you don't want to fluff, but I do this throughout my entire process while I am making my wreaths. I pull them apart, I fluff them out, I check out the placement and seeing if they're slipping around on the, the wreath form underneath. You can add a little glue if you need to. If you pull anything loose, you can fix that. I like it. I like the way the ribbon feels, the mesh feels, so I don't mind it. Be sure you follow me on my social media. I would love to see you there. Continuing around, all the way around. Now we're into the blue. We've overlapped our red and white. And now we're on to our blue section where the stars would normally be. Continue around. I don't wanna bore y'all, but I want you to see what I'm doing because it is questionable when you start on a wreath sometimes. It does not start off beautiful, but it usually ends up that way. So we're down to the last little bundle and I'm pushing it down and twisting it around and then pulling those apart. You see, you pull them apart Fix your tails, flip them down, and spread them out. 
and that is so much better. At this point, I'm not going to add anything extra into the center of these, so I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to trim off all of my extra pipe cleaners. If you would like to, you can give it just one last final twist for good measure and then cut off what you don't need, or you can poke what you don't need back through the wreath into the bottom. Totally up to you. See, here I go again, fluffing everything out, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, y'all may, may be tired of watching me fluff all this stuff, but it makes a huge difference in the end. You don't want anything to look like you pulled it straight out of a box. No, you want it to be fluffed. You want it to be pretty. You want to have a representation, uh, representation of all of your colors. See how just flipping them out, just curving those tails under, pulling those out. Look how much more full that wreath is now. This wreath would be fine by itself once it's all fluffed out and pretty. I think it would be beautiful by itself with nothing else added to it. You could add some little wooden stars. You can maybe paint them if you like a little Americana look. You know, add some little wood pieces in there if you would like. But this is how it looks. Nice and fluffed. Love this. I really like it. But if we want to add extra... There's always little thrifted pieces, like this little sign here. I have a star that could go, metal star could go in the middle. There are signs from Dollar Tree you could certainly put on there that would be beautiful. They have gorgeous 4th of July things. These were from Target Dollar Spot, and I got these at the thrift store. I recognize the tag. And then you could put these on anywhere you wanted. You could put a variety, and you could put all that stuff on there if you wanted to. But I really like the color of this one. It's got kind of a creamy white background and it looks more of like an Americana or rustic look. So that's what I'm going to go with. And I have just a little bit of this beautiful trim left and I'm just going to make like a shoelace bow. With this one, I'm not going to bother putting any backing on it at this point because I don't mind if it's a little bit floppy. This is so beautiful. I love finding ribbons at the thrift store because they're so different. And they're definitely um, lots of vintage ribbons that I have found and used in projects that I love. This is our wired ribbon. This is a very easy bow to do here. You saw how I did that. I don't need to tell you how to do that one, but if you have problems with bows, I do have a um, bow tutorial video with lots of different options for you. So maybe if you don't like this type of bow, you want something more full or bigger or with shorter tails or whatever, you can check that video out. I'll have it linked in the description box below as well as any other links that I mentioned. You can find my Pinterest there. I've got lots and lots of free printables and helpful Cricut information and sublimation things. You could go over there and check that out. That's all linked. Now I'm just going to put these bows together by using that same piece of red jute to tie them down. And I decided that I needed to add some of the red and white checked ribbon that we used on our bundles just to keep it consistent all the way throughout. And I'm going to make that bow just a little bit smaller. The same way we made the other wired ribbon because this one is wired. And then I'm going to struggle to tie it just like you see me doing here. By the way, did y'all notice I did my nails? I did. I had them fixed up for my family reunion. Did my toes and I did my fingers. And it looks weird to me because I'm not used to looking at my hands like that. It's almost like I'm watching somebody else do it. It's strange. Polish is probably coming off soon. Okay, now you can decide where you want to put your bow. The top, the side, the bottom, wherever you would like. But I thought it would be pretty right at the bottom of the blue section of this pretty wreath. So I'm just going to push the, um, the jute through the wreath, put it onto the form, and then tie it down. If you tie it down really tight, it's going to sink your bow down into the frame. So if you're not looking to sink it down in there and you want it to be on top, be sure you don't pull it too tightly when you tie it on. And then it will kind of just rest in there with the rest of the fabric and the ribbons. And you can trim off what's left. My bow's all crushed. It's going to be, you know how this works, start fluffing. Y'all know the process by now, fluff it up. Start pulling those wired ribbons, really kind of make them do what you want them to do. If you have your ribbon that's not wired in between wired ribbon, it helps to hold it in place. 
I'm just adjusting the size there of my metal bow. It's not glued, so it slides pretty easy for me when I want it to, but it stays in place though. And then decide what you want to do with your tails. Do you want to dovetail them? Do you want to cut them at slants? Would you like for your bow to have short tails or long tails? They can be equal or you can cut them at different lengths. And I thought maybe doing it at different lengths would be pretty, it kind of reminds me of, you know, fireworks, how they pop in the sky and you have the bulk of the firework in one place and then you have the little sparklers that come down. I thought that would be kind of a good thing to do with my tails. So that's what I did. That's kind of what I was thinking of, how I was inspired when I did the tails. Get them how you like them. And then I'm going to put this little sign right underneath it. And it's pretty easy to do. It's already got a string on the back, so I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner and twist it down. It tightens up that string that is there on the back of the sign so that you won't see it. And it gives you something that you can attach that to without using any hot glue. So I'll just feed that through like I did the bow. Cinch it down, but not too tight. You don't want it to squish anything. I'm gonna fix my bow how I want it and just kind of arrange it around the sign. And then um, the sign needs any little extra hot glue or any more um, security that can be done at this point. And I just use a little bit. I love this wreath. A little bit on my.